Hey guys, so I thought I'd do another ASMR video because I haven't done one in a while because I kind of lost my confidence to do one and also I didn't have the time so I am going to be doing a reading one because I know some of my reading ones have got popular so yeah so I'm reading um, from Butte which, you know, we all like a ghost story. I know it's Christmas, but... <laughs> so if you know I like the ghost story, so yeah. This is called... The Haunted Midlands. So we live in the Midlands, so yeah. We will um, see what they have. Um, so, um, this one is Central Birmingham. As you can see, um, so yeah, so it's central Birmingham. If you had stood in the centre of Birmingham a thousand years ago, you would have bowed yourself in a deserted waste. There would have been very little to see, perhaps one or two huts with wattle and dub walls and thatched roofs. The soil was mainly sand and gravel and the few families living here would have found it almost impossible to grow their crops and feed their animals. There was no road junction while passing that travel it with passing travellers and no river to use as highway. Birmingham had nothing to offer and should have faded into obscurity. There was only one way in which it could develop. Through trade and manufacturing, the seeds were planted by the enterprising Peter D. Birmingham, who established the first tea market in 1766. It was the first market charter in the whole of Birmingham Plateau. The following was probably the village green and where it Exterban Street, High Street, Moore Street and Park Street are now. Could have been a few rudimental one story houses with walls of wattle and doob, rectangular in shape and with thatched roofs. Haunted by Henry, Union Street, Birmingham. No doubt, under the foundations of the large stores in High Street and Union Street, are the remains of medieval houses going back as far as the 1100s and 1200s. No one has seen the ghost in the large Union Street store to guess at his age, which would be picked up and placed anywhere within the last thousand years. Diane says, We call our friends Henry because the premises used to be the old Henry's, old Henry's store. We hear him catch glimpses of him out of the corner of the eye and most decide, decidedly feel his presence. There are the classic freezing spots, and I do mean freezing. You walk into a wall of cold and walk out the other side, unless he decides to follow one of us around the stockroom, his favourite haunt. The stock gets shoved off the shelves, silly little things disappear and reappear in annoying places. Lifts activate on their own, lights go on and off, sensors get set on, and doors fail to lock. Someone shouts hello or good morning on the shop floor at about 6am. Time varies with the clocks altering and bangs on the walls. He has no pre preference for day or night. All the usual strange phenomena that could be explained away but not quite. He has set books and is usually seen as a male wearing one of what used to be the common brown workman's coats. There are, we believe, more than one Henry, but we use the collective name to call her all. One is dressed in black with a high collar and wishes about the place. 
and he makes you feel very uncomfortable. Not frightened, but very uncomfortable. He creeps up behind you and gives the impression of being very curious about what is going on, but also slightly annoyed by us. I have done a few night shifts for various reasons and now know he is there. Busy in his own world and whenever I have to effect any fitting changes, i.e. moving shelves, etc. He really gets annoyed about August. He goes quiet, quiet until we start the moves for Christmas. A lot of this song like, sounds like poltergeist activity. Poltergeist is simply German for noisy or disruptive ghost. As you read through the stories, you will see that many of them have the same phenomena. Items are moved or thrown and ground. There are electrical disturbances, including the telephone, video and TV, together with, with explicable noises such as footsteps or loud bangs. There are problems with the water supply, articles disappear and reappear in strange places or not at all and the inhabitants report a feeling that someone is there and even see shadowy figures. Poltergeist activity has been known since recorded history and it is experienced throughout the civilized world but we still await a scientific explanation. Final devotions, Dick. Dig Beth. Birmingham flourished in the 13th and 14th centuries as well as being a vibrant trading centre. It attracted workers in leather, iron and textiles. Birmingham had a greater variety of trades than any other city. By 1656 it was a little timber frame town of about 15 streets and had expanded into Dig Beth. Dig Beth. Deriton and Aston. To appreciate the next story, you need to be reminded of the ecclesial ecclesiastical history in 1529. Henry VIII compelled the clergy to acknowledge him as supreme head of the church in England. In defiance of the Pope, he died in night in 15. 1747. In 1553, Mary, his daughter by his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, became queen. She aimed to restore the Roman Catholic faith and the stern persecution of Protestants began in 1555. Bloody Mary, as she was known, died in 1558. The next section is told by Maggie, a store supervisor with the King in Birmingham. Maggie is a historian and says that baiting bulls and bullfighting was only a small part of the public entertainment provided in the building, bull ring. It was used for public spectacles, including executions. My family, the Healy's, has had its fair share of strange dealings. I think it must be got the Celtic blood. One of my brothers, after being made redundant and having to find work wherever he could, used to work at a factory called Thomas Haddon in Stokes. Situated in Digbeth and now demolished, all that remains is a blue plaque on the outside dedicated to the memory of the blessed John Rogers. He had the dubious distinction of being the first Protestant martyr sent to the stake in 1555 by Bloody Mary and executed in February of that year. The factory was built on the site of the original bull ring and execution area. <coughs> anyway, as background of information, Jim has never married and at once, one point, the thought of entering the priesthood but like the rest of the family has now become Anglican. I mention this because I think that it was as direct bearing on what he encountered one night with a pair of his friends at the factory. I think this occurred about 1973 to 4, give or take a year either side. Jim came home at 9.30 after a shift absolutely terrified a big bloke. 
but generally placid he was still shaking when he told my mother and myself how he and some colleagues had been down in the basement when they heard shuffling noises. Jim went ahead being the one least afraid it, if it proved to be rats and we walked straight into the side of a middle aged man dressed in a long grey shift head bowed as he moved slowly reading from an open book held before him at chest height. His lips moved but words were not audible and he did not seem to be away, aware of Jim or his shaking pals. He was according to my brother totally absorbed in the book. Most likely a prayer book, Jim, to this very day firmly believes he saw John Rogers saying his final devotions the night before he faced the dreadful punishment meted out by Body Mary. Jim was a Catholic at the time but no longer practising and under pressure to revert to the Catholic faith. Faith, poor John Rogers was in a similar situation overseen by priests trying to break him and make him recant. Jim thinks it was for that reason he was privileged to see him. At first we thought the dates and then not tile. John Rogers was executed on the 5th of February and Jim saw him on the 18th of February. But then my intelligent mother reminded my frightening big brother of the change in the calendar by 10 days in the early 17th, 18th century. I don't know if anyone else ever saw some, anything again, but I do know that Jim was very wary about going to the basement, even though he knew in his heart that the apparition could do him no real harm, that he had seen a picture from the past and was very, very honoured to have witnessed it. Jimmy is now living in South Africa. Power Search is a Midland organisation dedicated to investigating the paranormal. If you would like to become, like to become a member, the address is, the, is in the front of the boot. The chairman, David Taylor, writes the haunt, in Haunted Holidays. It is commonly, commonly held belief among paranormal investigators that ghosts saw some sort of recording, somehow preserved in the very fabric of a building. The theory became popular through the support of Oliver Lodge, professor of physics and mathematics at Liverpool University, later on the first principal of Birmingham University, and an eminent Victorian paranormal investigator. Lodge suggested that grief and suffering are recorded in some way at the place where they were experienced. There has been much speculation as to how this effect called the Stern State Theory after 1970s television drama works, with no one being able to come up with a completely satisfactory explanation. We shall be referring, referring to the Stern State Theory many, time, many times in this book. Here's a picture of Henry. Well, what we think Henry looks like. Looks pretty creepy. It's very creepy, isn't it? So that's how do one guys that video do one I might do another one tonight, I'm unsure. Anyway. Don't forget to subscribe to me, YouTube, comment on my videos, like my clip videos and also share. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like me to do more from the read more from the book, please leave a comment below. Thank you guys.